Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love and your mercy towards us. We thank you for all that you are doing and we thank you for all that you have done but we have yet to see. Father, we put our trust in you. We will not give up on your word. We will not give up on you because we know you will never give up on us. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name, dear Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. And the children of God will shout louder. Amen. Glory to God. You may please be seated. Let's appreciate the best voices in the land, the exalted tribe. We can do better than that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you just celebrate with me, my father, your father, the lead pastor of Harvesters International Christian Center, Pastor Bola G. Do. If you love him, you can do better than that. If you appreciate him, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And do we know what's happening next Sunday? It's his birthday. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's his birthday. Please let's come celebrating him. One thing that you can do that will be very good is that you can do a video talking about Pastor Balaji's impact in your life. Glory to God. Just do a video, put it on social media, tag him, and that will be a very great thing to do. Am I right? That's not so difficult. If Pastor Balaji has really blessed you. Just please do that. Praise the name of the Lord. Not to mention all the times on Next Level Prayer that he comes out every morning to pray. Glory to God. Pastor Baladi wakes up 3 a.m. to prepare for that prayer every day. Praise the name of the Lord. And he does that with each and every one of us in mind. Glory to God. So it's important we appreciate him. And we think it's nothing. Come and lead Next Level Prayers for one week. If you come to church for the next three months. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's just do that. Glory to God. Are we ready for the word of God? All right. Praise the name of the Lord. So we've been talking about the word of God and today we are talking about becoming a man or woman of the word. Becoming a man or woman of the word. Let's open our Bibles to Job chapter 23 verse 12. Let's quickly look at that. Job 23 verse 12. It says, neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I have esteemed his words, the words of his mouth, more than my necessary food. Glory to God. And this brings to mind um, um, an adage or um, a slogan that Pastor Balaji gave us many years ago saying, no Bible, no breakfast, no scripture, no supper. Saying that you have exalted the word of God, the reading of the word of God, the study of the word of God, more than your necessary meals. Glory to God. And this talks about priority. Prioritizing the word of God and putting premium on the word of God. If you are a believer and you don't have a structure to read the Bible, then you need to reconsider your seriousness about God. Glory to God. If you are a believer, you don't have a way to read through the Bible in a year or at least even the New Testament in a year. You need to reconsider what really you are doing when it comes to God's word because God's word is God's wisdom for living. Glory to God. God's word is God's wisdom for living. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look at John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Praise the name of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This speaks of the fact that the word of God predates all of creation. Praise the name of the Lord. The word of God is the reason for everything's existence. The word of God created everything. Praise the name of the Lord. And in this passage of scripture, one of the things we need to know is that the word of God there is also the word logos, meaning logic or reasoning. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can say that the word of God is how God reasons. Praise the name of the Lord. Where you understand how someone reasons, you will most likely be able to predict them. Am I right? 
when you know how someone thinks, you most likely will know how that person can, how, what conclusions that person can draw, or what that person can say, or what that person can do, or what that person thinks about what you are doing. Glory to God. You see, many people in this generation want to hear the voice of God. They want to be led of God because most people believe that if God says something, then it will turn out well. Right? Am I right? So if God says, this is the business you should do, what would you think that? That business will turn out well. Glory to God. If God says, this is the person you should marry, what does that mean? That person will marry well. Glory to God. Whatever God tells you to do, will most likely turn out well. So a lot of people put a lot of time, or if they can't get it themselves, they go to a pastor and say, Pastor, these are three men. This is Bayo. This um, Bosu. This Afa or Tafa or whatever. And just says, Pastor, who will I marry? Some people do that, right? They go to prophets and say, have you had that kind of experience? Glory to God. They go to prophets and the prophet, they want the prophet to tell them their future or tell them who they will marry. It's not really the prophet they are interested in. They are interested in God's view. And they believe that the prophets can bring God's view to them. Glory to God. But one thing you should know is that you don't need a prophet to tell you what to do. All you need is the word of God. Because everything God thinks about every issue in life is in the word of God. Today, I was reading the book of Roots because I have a yearly plan to finish the Bible. So I'm in Ruth. I started from Genesis. I'm in Ruth now. So I read the entire book of Ruth. And when I read it, I said, my God, this is the template for getting married. I'm telling you, if you've read the book of Ruth, there, there is a template for getting married if you're a woman. Glory to God. One of the things that I saw there is that you can't get married when you're at home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What I mean by that is that you can't be in the house 24-7. Church, office, house. Church, office, house. Church, uh. You don't go out. Nobody sees you. One of the things that the book of Luke talks about is visibility. Praise the name of the Lord. As well, those of us are, you know, in fact, a lot of churches have done a lot of memes around that. As they are sharing the grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, you finish it in the car. Surely, go, and you're driving, your surely is in the car. Nobody knows you, nobody can see you. I saw it there clearly. One of the things that Naomi was always telling Ruth is that go, let, see, go to Boaz, be around him, sleep at his feet, on, on, just let him be seeing you every day. He said, change your clothes. Even told her because Ruth, um, Ruth's husband died, so she was mourning. So she was wearing the, the clothing of a widow. Ruth, um, Naomi told her, change your clothes. Wear something fine. It's there. It's in the Bible. Another thing you see is that character is, oh my God. Character is one of the biggest deals where people want to make a decision. Why did Boaz marry Ruth? One of the things he saw was loyalty. He was impressed by Ruth's loyalty to her mother-in-law. Because it didn't make natural sense. You've lost your husband. Your mother-in-law is going back to our town. You now follow her. She said, go back. You, I cannot bear children again. If, even if I bear, will you wait for them to grow up before you marry them? You know what she said? He said, my peop your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. She followed and the Bible says, and Boaz made inquiries to find out this. So one of the things he was impressed by was her loyalty. If she can be loyal in a place where there is no apparent benefit, she will be more loyal in a place where she sees benefit. Amen. That's one of the reasons. Character. So when you are studying the word of God as a woman, you now say, hey, this is my bad character. Who is the one doing me? And I'm telling you the truth. Let me tell you something. Eh? Any man that is good, that wants the best for you, wants to build a future for you, will investigate your character. I'm telling you. I know because that's what I did. Every time I see somebody I like, first place I go is Facebook. What's she saying? So I just go there on Facebook, just be saying anything. I don't care for no man. I'm getting here. Continue. You don't know that that's what's causing the problem. Just go and read all your posts. What you are supporting, what you are not supporting. 
Because that's what I did. I will first go on Facebook, on Instagram. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. No, 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 no. Zero. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. But the word of God will teach you these things. You will see. You will see them. Uh, I don't know. I can't spend too much time there. I, I hope you get what I'm saying. When you study the word of God, you see, you, God does not need to tell you. You will see it in the word of God. The same thing with business. If you read the book of Proverbs very well, you will do business well. If you sit with the book of Proverbs, even your career, the Bible says, go to the ants, you sluggard, and observe their ways. They have neither master or kings. They know how to do what? To walk in the summer so that they can have food to eat in the winter. There are many lessons to learn from that. First of all, as, a, as an employee, what he's telling you is that work like someone that does not need to be supervised. That's what he's saying. Work like someone that does not need supervision. And that's, what, that's the dream of every employer, to find somebody that they don't need to micromanage and that will do the work well. It's in the Bible, but no, you will not do that. You say, Father, the oil of godliness, but you will not work well. You want, to go, you want to go to work. When you get there, you want to be praying for three hours. Shakabakata, shakabakata. Whereas, that's not what you do at work. What you do at work is work. Is how you work. Praise the name of the Lord. Some things we should not be looking for, but we are looking for. Praise the Lord. You want to get a job, you don't want to know how to do the work. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches us to be exceptional at what we do. In fact, one of the things the revelations God gave me as I was um, um, studying Genesis is something that God always does after he finishes his work. The Bible says that, and if God creates the stars and the moon, he will say to himself, and he saw that it was good. That means God always appraised the work that he did, and he will see that it was good. Self-appraiser. And you put. So what God told me is that anything that you do, you, the, your signature must be on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? People must sit and say, ah, this is this person's work. Because it's so good, it cannot be missed. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's so good, it cannot. What that does to you, you now realize that as a child of God, is not an excuse for mediocrity. You need to be excellent as, as God is excellent. That's what the word of God teaches. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Diligence, excellence. These are the kind of things. The Bible says that the word of God is God's logic, is God's way of reasoning. So our God is an excellent God. Praise the name of the Lord. When you look into the word and you study the word, you begin to find all these things. Glory to God. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 8. We'll read from verse 5. Now, I want to show how God works in a life of a person practically and how you can maximize the word of God in your life. Because a lot of times when we're in church, we'll hear Pastor Balaji say, put priority on the word of God, study the word of God, apply the word of God to your life. And some people say, the pastor have done it. It's not working. This word is not working. Let's see why it may not be working. Glory to God. Luke chapter 8 from verse 5. It says, a sower went out and sows his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and some were trodden down, some, and it was trodden down. And the fowls of the air devoured it. Next verse. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked what? Moisture. Next verse. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and, do, and did what? And choked it. That's where we got it choked from, you know. It choked. That, that's where it came from. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 8. And other fell, fell where? On good ground, sprang up, bear fruit what? An hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears, do what? Let him hear. So what Jesus was saying, essentially, and he, began, he begins to explain this in verse 11, is that the word, the seed, the word, the word of God is what? Is the seed. When you have a seed, what do, you do, what do you do with it? You plant it because without planting a seed, the seed is useless. Now, the seed in itself, there is nothing wrong with the seed. That's the word of God. Because if you notice in this description, the, the seed had no problem. 
Praise the Lord. The result that the seed produces is not dependent on the seed. It's, pro it's dependent on what? The soil. Praise the name of the Lord. So, when you receive the word of God, the result that the word of God will produce in your life is dependent on the soil. Now, in verse 11, the Bible now describes, begins to explain what the soil is. Praise the Lord. Are you, are you following me? It says, now the parable is this. The seed is what? The word of God. Next verse. Those by the wayside are what? Are these are here? No, those by the wayside are they that hear, then, then come at the devil and take it away the word out of their what? So where is, what is the soil? What is the soil? Their heart. So the, the seed, the word of God is the seed, but where it is planted is what? Your heart. Now you see three different variations of what the heart can be that produce three different results. So the results you get in life from the word of God is not dependent on the word. It's dependent on what? The heart. Glory to God. That's why the Bible says, receive the word of God with meekness because this word is able to save what? Your soul. So your heart is the defining parameter. What is the condition of your heart? Praise the name of the Lord. Do you receive the word by the wayside? So what does that mean? Some of us here are listening, but we are distracted. As you are listening to me, you're on Facebook. Or you're on Instagram, on TikTok. Or you're on WhatsApp. Are you aware? There are some people, now, if, we do, if we quickly go, some people, that's on their WhatsApp. Say, I'm, I'm in church, I'm in church. The word is being preached now. Text me, text me back later. What happens is that you are not hearing what I'm saying. It's getting there, but it's falling by the wayside. So after the service, you don't remember anything. Glory to God. Some people can even hear some things and say, ah, that's powerful. Glory to God. Oh, well, mm, stand up. Mm, pastor, preach, preach. Some people even come and meet me after the service and say, Pastor, ha, that word that you preach. I say, which, what, which one exactly? Ah, Pastor. Ah. Oh, everything was powerful. What does that mean? They didn't hear nothing. Nothing has entered. So the Bible says that is the word that falls by the wayside. So when they go out to face the word, there's nothing to say. There's no word in their hearts. So that's one. The other one, it says, is on stony ground. Hard. Hard. You're, you come to church with your own preconceived notion. Praise God. You have your own bias. You have your opinions. You stand on your ground. You start, preconceived notion. Your heart is hardened. Hard so when the word is coming, it's just bouncing off. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some people who say, um, maybe Pastor Bola just maybe some, somebody has been single for a while, for example, or somebody has been looking for a job. Or, and Pastor Bola now says, oh, the Bible says do not be equal, unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You now say, no, that's not true. That's not true. There are many unbelievers that have good homes. Is that what the Bible says? <laughs> who is talking about good homes? Praise the name of the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, that's not true. Uh, you, you are always arguing. You are, you are always, as you are sitting down there, you are arguing. Everything, you are, you, are dis, you are just arguing. The Bible says that kind of person did not receive the word properly. And there are some, they don't argue. They will just shout, receive the word, but it's not entering because they did not understand it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those of you that don't understand what you are saying, they are just excited. I always wonder some people, they just preach, pastor, what did he say? I don't know, I don't know, but it's, it sounds great. It just sounds great. They don't understand what it means. Bible says when temptations come, when issues come, they give up. Easily. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the things you must learn is to be persistent with the word. I shared an example in the, in the second service and I said this. I said there was a certain lady, right, that went for a crusade. And when she got to that crusade, she had goiter. You know, and you know the Bible says we are not moved by what we, by sight, but what? by faith. So she went up for the ministration and she was prayed for. And she said, I believe I received my healing. But guess what? The goiter was still there. The goiter didn't go. So she went believing that she had received that healing and was thanking God for the healing. So that crusade happens every year. So that next, the following year, she came out with the people from the previous crusade that had a testimony. And shared the testimony with the goiter in her throat. When she now, she came up and said, thank you, this is one year after that the Lord has healed me. This is a true life story, I'm not joking. And everybody was like, oh, praise God, thank you. People could see the goiter, so they just humored her, she went off stage. 
They were okay with it. The next year, she came again with the crusade with the goita, came up for testimony again. She now said, this is two years that the Lord has healed me of goita. Everybody looked. Is that not the goita there? Well, it's okay. Let's, let's, let's join our faith with our faith. She went, third year she came. The Lord, this is the third year with the goita. After she got that, the pastor just said, madam, don't come next year. <laughs> you know what she did? She wasn't discouraged by that. She went in front of the mirror and said, Lord, I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. I believe you have healed me, not for my sake, but for the sake of the people that don't believe. Let this goiter go. And the goiter just dropped. Bam. She held on to it for three years. How persistent can you be? See, the, the Bible says, the word of God, it says, heaven and earth will pass away. It says, but not a jot from my word will pass until it has accomplished that, word, that which it was said concerning you. It says, not one word will pass. Can you believe the word of God to the point where it seems you are irrational? Glory to God. It says, because they understood the word, they stayed with the word, and the word did not fail them. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible now talks of the last set of people and talks about their hearts. Uh, no, this third set of people, they will hear the word and it says that, but the cares of this life will choke the word. You can't hear the word today. And the next place you are going is to sit with a bunch of friends that have all the bad news in Nigeria to dispense. You have heard here that when the Bible, when we say there is a, when people say there is a casting down, we declare that there is a lifting up. But you now go and go and sit with the very friends and say, oh boy, you see how this Nigeria they go? You see? Have you heard about the budget now? They are using 18 billion to build, um, to do boho. You know, how this country, hey, it will not be better for them. Hey, you know, how you, you now join the, hey, to a bag of rice has doubled. You are now saying, what are you saying with your mouth? You have now joined people that are being cast down. You have forgotten that you are supposed to be lifted. Do you understand what I'm saying? It says that when you do that, that word will choke the word of God in you. It will choke it. The word of God is a seed. It needs the right environment to grow. Glory to God. It needs the right environment. Like you cannot plant an apple, tree, an apple seed in Ogomoshua and expect it to grow. I bet anybody has done that before. You have to plant it in the right environment. You need an enabling environment for it. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Of course, the last set of people were people that heard the word of God and he fell on good ground and he yielded for them. So the question is this, what is the state of your heart? That's the question. What is the state of your heart? Are you, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it does what? Flows the issues of life. Glory to God. I remember one time, same, similar um, um, testimony as that woman when I had I had a terrible toothache. Terrible. Have you had a toothache? Anybody has had a toothache? This was five years ago, first time in my life. I actually thought it was a migraine at first until I went and they said it's a toothache. And I was, wow. The thing woke me up in the middle of the night. Praise the Lord. And as I woke up, I was like, oh my God. So eventually I removed the, the tooth. In fact, I removed two. It was terrible. I went to General Hospital then, somewhere in Bagada. I didn't know it was that bad. I know how they are in, people are in General Hospital, very callous. Open your mouth! <laughs> Bing, bah, bah. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> ah, ah, shut up, are you not a man? <laughs> they were not nice about it. It wasn't painful, but the way they were, the, the psychological pressure, I felt like they were removing all the teeth. It was so bad. Funny enough, it wasn't painful. It was just the way they were going about it. Open. Open, 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 open. So after like a year, the toothache returned on this side. I woke up from my bed. I said, never. I'm not going back to the hospital. I started confessing. If that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body, it quickens me. It brings me to life. It, 
my sister and my brother, the way I'm saying it is not the way I said it then. I was crying. It's the same spirit. Oh God, this is So that's I don't even know. I'll be stumbling on the wall. I said it from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. See, you must see this one that we are doing jeleke, jeleke with the word. You have not started. You don't even you say which word that you believe. You say, eh, that thing in Genesis, that, that one. Heaven helps those who help this. You don't even know you are quoting super story for the word of God. I quoted, I cried, I said, I now went to work. When I got to work, after like, two, I didn't, till tomorrow, I can't find it to take. Do you understand what I'm saying? You must learn to stick with the word. You must know it. You must stand, spend time. Whatever you don't know, can you quote? Can you quote what you don't know? So I don't know any single scripture. No one single scripture. But lonely, lonely, lonely. Lonely at the top, and you wonder why I see lonely. Yeah. Glory to God. You see, eh, there are some things you must see. You must be careful. Some things form the basis of your life. And I know, because I've gone through some phases like that in my life. There are some songs, there are some things I don't let enter my heart. It changes you. And that's what the word, God knows how he made you. And he says for your life to change, put your word in your, put that word in your heart. It will change your life. I remember one time when I was in the university, I was listening to a lot of DMX. I remember listening to DMX. I realized that throughout that week, I was behaving like that. I can just be walking. What you man, nigga? Nobody's talking to me. Huh? I'm just because the thing. I, Bible says, "Let the word dwell in you richly." Some of you, let the word of DMX dwell in you. That's what has happened. So you are not behaving like him. Do you understand what I'm saying? So sit down with the word. Be full of the word, so that the word is overflowing in your life. I'm telling you the truth. See. When you are making decisions, if your decisions, you don't navigate it through the word of God, you don't know the word yet. Praise the name of the Lord. Like I said, okay, I don't want to go because it's not a relationship. It's just that it's the most practical way to explain it. When I was going to get married, praise God, I was using the word. Praise the Lord. My, see, first of all, eh? One thing, there's no beauty in this world if you are not born again. You cannot be beautiful more than Jesus. As in, there's no beauty. Once I speak to you and you don't believe in God, you don't believe in Jesus, you don't, you don't, that's the end. The love will die. That's how much I trained myself. The love will die instantly. That's number one. So that's even a giving. The second thing, if you don't have value for the things of God, like I do. See, if you meet my wife currently, you, one of the things you notice is that she's fine. Praise the Lord. And I'm not boasting about that. That's not it boasting. Mm. Yeah. People that know, know she's fine. Praise God. Hallelujah. But guess what? I did not choose her for that reason. No. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you one of the, the things that got me interested in my wife, and you'll be surprised. That's me. I don't know about you. I was teaching a class. And I, after I thought she was in the class, so I taught the class. It was one of our spiritual classes. And I taught the class. After the class, and I said, if you have questions, follow me. She was not one of the people that followed. Uh -uh. I said, wow. <laughs> this fine girl wants to hear the word. That's good. That's good. That's good. I I'm, I'm impressed by that. So we sat down. She now asked questions. I said, she's even asking questions. My God. <laughs> then after that period, I was now, you know, after that, I now started doing shadowing. Surveillance. I was just surveilling her, just watching. That's why I said, if somebody likes you, the, and the person is a good person, the person will pay attention to you even when you don't know. She didn't know, but me, I was walking around, I was circumferencing, like a satellite. I was just watching every behavior. So I noticed that she was talking to one of, our, one of the leaders in church. So I, I was just, wow, that talk, she's talking. Okay, let me just go there to find out what's going on. As I got there, she saw me, because... One of my values is honor, honor for spiritual authority. Personal value, honor for spiritual authority. And that should be every Christian value. As she saw me, of course, she didn't know me as she knows me now. Today is different too. But then, when she saw me, she stood up and said, good afternoon, pastor. I said, eh? You have respect for pastor? <laughs> Number three. Glory to God. Yeah. Then when we became friends, I said, talking, 
because I'm into a lot of gospel music, gospel rap, I was just rapping one rap by Lecrae. She now finished the sentence. I said, I've married this guy. <laughs> In fact, we were discussing it a few days ago. She was like, why did you marry me? I said, because you finished that rap by Lecrae. <laughs> and guess what? I don't know about you, but I have one of the best marriages in the world. I'm telling you. How did I get there? By following the word of God. I did not use human criteria. I used God's criteria. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you stick with the word, you will not lose. If you stick with the word, you will not lose. Glory to God. So, how do we, how can we understand the word? Let's go into that place. Let's quickly touch that. How do we understand? So, the word of God, we talked about the word of God. Let's mention it. The word of God is creative. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the word of God is a seed. It creates what you want to see in your life. You just need to plant it. That's the one. Number two is the word of God is a weapon. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. The word of God is a weapon. The Bible says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And if you know the sword, the sword can be used for offense and defense. Praise the name of the Lord. When the devil comes knocking, it's not English that the devil will hear. Glory to God. When the devil came against Jesus, what did, what did Jesus Christ say? It is written. Praise the name of the Lord. He didn't say God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. Over, over my dead body. Over, he didn't say that. He says it is what? Is written like the way I say when I had the truth, many other things that I have, I usually quote the word of God. That's my major word when I want to come talk, talk about healing. Because the Bible says, if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, it will quicken, it will give you life. Glory to God. So I don't say, God forbid, over my dead body. Uh, uh, That's not the word of God. Jesus said, What? It is written. How can you quote what you don't know? Do you understand what I'm saying? So the word of God is your defense against the enemy. Both spiritual attack and what? Social and psychological attack. I heard something, and some of us must have heard this story. True life story, and it was on social media, about a lady that met this guy in Abuja. I don't know how many of us heard the story. But as I say, some of us must have heard it. And when she met the guy, she thought, oh, all these guys were one of these, you know, socialite guys. I just play with girls and just abandon them. But the guy was not like that. They, they, they met, the guy was, you know, doing well. She was very surprised. And on her birthday, the guy just bought her a car. That same day, too, bought her a house. Yeah, yeah, that's how I felt, too. Ah. <laughs> then the lady is a masseuse. She does massages for people. She usually goes to, the, to her client's house and the guy bought her another house for the, another building so that she can have her own spa. Took her to Europe. They went there together to buy the equipment. So from then, the lady was living a luxury life, private jet, flying to here and there, holiday. You know, so the lady was like, ah, when will I meet your parents? I said, oh, no, you can't meet my parents yet until we do, you know, proposal and everything. You know, but she met the siblings and all that. So he now proposed two years after. The night of that proposal, he woke up 12 midnight. This is a true life story. I'm not, it's not made up. Woke up 12 midnight, woke the lady up and said, okay, the reason why I've not introduced you to my parents is because there's a tradition in, a, in my family. If you're going to marry me, you must sleep with my father. And said that that's what his elder brother's wives did. And that's how it is. And that if she doesn't do it, what will happen is that everything will be taken away. The lady was first angry. No, how can you do that? Let's go. No, no, no. He said, don't worry. Think about it. By the way, she now sent a message to someone. I don't want to mention the person's name now. To ask for advice. Then the person now said, the person didn't see the message on time. The person now saw the message later and said, oh, what's going on? How are you? So what happened? What have you decided? Silence. That was last year. So this year, the person wanted to do a video on the same story. Now called her to ask for permission. She was now like, no, fine, you can go ahead and do it. She now said, but by the way, what did you decide? Silence. My brothers and sisters, what's the answer? She has done it. She has done it. See, somebody might say that I cannot do that. You don't know for sure. You do not know for sure. I'm telling you. You are just looking at it as... Do you understand what I'm talking Two years of luxury life that you did not know even existed. They will take it away from you in one day. She was not equipped for that kind of situation. 
But you know that same thing has happened to someone before? Who did it happen to? Jesus. Not in the same exact way, but a representation. Satan told Jesus, he says, look at all the kingdoms of the world. They belong to me. He says, bow to me. He says, if you bow to me, I will give you all the kingdoms. All of us will have our bow to me moments in life. Do you understand what I'm saying? It may not come in that exact form, but one day, if you don't, if you don't remove the price tag from your head, the devil will come and ask for your price tag. The devil will come. He will bring something to you that you cannot say no to. He will bring a price that you cannot say no to. If you don't fortify yourself with the word of God, he will win that battle. Because in the realm of the senses, the devil is king. Glory to God. It takes a spiritual person to look beyond the senses. Because they will not give you what you, what you have. He will come and offer you what you have. He will offer you what you desire that you don't have. And if the word of God is not the greatest thing in your heart, it's not that thing that is the deciding factor in your life, you may fall. Glory to God. So it's not just a spiritual defense. It's a what? Psychological defense. Some of you, it's just one zero. They just, they just add one zero. One zero, hundred million. Uh, you've been working on your life now. You have not made ten million. One zero. Just put one zero. Hundred million. You know what some of you say? You know what? Once I add the zero, I will ask God for forgiveness. I will even pay tight. The church will grow. Is that not what you say? Because no, nobody will know. Will anybody know? Who will know? Nobody will know. But if there is nothing in your heart greater than life, greater than money, greater than fame, greater than status, you will fall. And what gives you that kind of mind is the word of God. Glory to God. So let's move. Let, how, so how do we study the word of God? Number one, Pastor Balai taught us context. Glory to God. He said what well, context. So we look at the context to interpret the text. So there's a pretext. Do you remember? There's a pretext. There's a what? Uh, hold on, just gone. You said yes. I now asked. You now went silent. There's a pretext. There's the text and what? Uh -huh, post text. Uh, that's good. P fantastic. Then another way to interpret the word of God is cultural context. Glory to God. Cultural context. First of all, I talked about the eye of the needle. We all remember. Do we remember? Yeah, the eye of the needle. Saying that the eye of the needle is not the kind of eye of needle that we know today. It's a door in Jerusalem. Glory to God. Yeah, I don't want to waste too much time on that because of time. Then another, um, another way to understand the Bible is language. Now, that's what I'm going to spend some time on. Language. When you're studying the Bible, it's important for you to understand language. First, 2 Timothy 3.15 3, 3, says this. It says, study to show, thy, to show thyself approved, right? So that you can rightly divide the word of God. What does that mean? If you can rightly divide the word of God, you can also right, wrongly divide the word of God. So if you give wrong um, interpretation to the word of God, you will have wrong believing and wrong believing will lead to wrong actions and wrong actions will lead to what? Wrong results. Do you understand what I'm saying? Praise the name of the Lord. So for you to understand the word of God, you must be able to break it down and get the real thing. So one of the things that can be confusing in the word of God is what? Language. Language in the sense that the word of God is also a literal, mat literary material. I don't, I don't know if I got that correctly. Do you understand? Meaning that there's poetry in the word of God. Psalms is poetic. Songs of Solomon is poetic. Praise the name of the Lord. So there are also what? Figures of speech in the Bible. So there are hyperbolic speeches in the Bible. Glory to God. There are hyperbolic speeches in the Bible. There are similes in the Bible. So for example, when the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus Christ like a dove. Does that mean that the Holy Spirit is a dove? No. It says the descent of the Holy Spirit was like a dove. What figure of speech is that? Simile. So it's not saying that the Holy Spirit is a dove. It's saying that the Holy Spirit is what? Like a dove. Glory to God. So that's a figure of speech. Another figure of speech is in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, where the Bible says, even though you speak with tongues of men and with tongues of angels, if you do not have charity, you are like a clinging symbol. And a, do you understand what they're saying? So somebody now cannot read that scripture and say, oh, there's what is called tongues of angels. Praise the name of the Lord. But that's not what it means. Tongues of angels there was what? Was hyperbolic. Or you could call it um, metaphor. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you understand? So what he's saying there is that if you like, cry blood. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? That's basically what he's saying. If you like, cry, bro. If you like, have tongues of men, oh, have tongues of angels. If you don't have love, oh, you are wasting your time. And that should be, and that, what that does is that he brings into um, context what every Christian should look for as a Christian. See, speaking in tongues is good, but doesn't mean you are spiritual. If you notice, when I was looking for a wife, I did not put speaking in tongues as part of the criteria. Because that does not mean spirituality. Praise the name of the Lord. What the greatest show of spirituality is love. That's what the Bible was saying there. That if you see somebody speaking in tongues, katoka, lekoka, kinko, 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 unu, unu, kai, oh, kai, oh, ha, you know, I've not heard this kind of tongues before. This is consonant tongues, hyper. He said, the tongue does not matter. What matters is what he displays or she displays to the brethren. Glory to God. If that same person goes out and they, maybe they just scratch the car. Nah, are you mad? Ah, ah. If not before church, ah, ah, I don't finish you. Ah, you don't know me. You don't sabi me. Now start calling names. He says that kind of person, no matter the tongues, is making noise. Glory to God. So that's what the Bible So If you don't know that, you will think that it's tongues that make somebody spiritual. Praise the name of the Lord. Even quoting scripture does not make someone spiritual. Do you understand what I'm saying? What makes you spiritual is how obedient you are to the word of God. That is the defining factor of spirituality. Glory to God. Glory to God. So finally... What should you do with the word of God? How, what is your response to the word of God? Number one, believe the word. Believe the word. Don't have guardrails for the word. Don't lock yourself out. Don't constrain the word. You see, many, many of us, we're not really serving God. We're serving ourselves. Many of us have put restrictions on how much God can work in our lives. If somebody says, hey, join a department, you say, no, 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 no. Me and my God, who is your God? When you say me, did you create your own God? So I say, when I say, ah, why don't you go? Why don't you become a cell leader? Pastor, why don't you become a cell leader? And I say, no, 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 no. I need, I need to pray about. It. Pray to who? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says, pray ye. The, it says the laborers. It says the, the harvest is plenteous, but what? But the laborers are what? Are you hearing? God said, my laborers are few. They are now saying volunteer to work. You now say no. I need to pray. What will He say? Will He say don't do it? I, I, I don't know if you understand my... Uh, he has already told you that my laborers are few. He now says, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will do for. Send forth laborers. The word send forth means push them out. Push them out to come and serve. Somebody now comes to you. He's not pushing you out. He says, come and serve. You now say, I want to go and ask my father. Which father? See, I can know how spiritual you are by how you respond to the word of God. That's how I know. And let me tell you, See, women, let me tell you this. I'm saying this because it has saved my marriage times without number. The word of God has helped me. I don't, I see, I wish I, I could bring you into my home and you could just be watching me and my wife. I'm not saying we are perfect, but I'm saying what directs me majorly is the word. There was a day, and I'll say this story and i close, just to help you. There was a day me and my wife had a bad argument. I was so angry. And I was right. You know where you are wrong is a different case. This one, I was right. I was on my right. Well, guess what? That morning, I was going to pray three hours prayer with the brethren. So as I just go, I was, in fact, I was so angry. I, went, I picked up my keys, went to the door, opened the door as I was going out. I just said the voice of God, where are you going? I said, I'm going to pray. A scripture just dropped in my heart that husbands, deal with your wives with understanding so that your prayers may not be hindered. <sighs> I closed the door. I couldn't go for that prayer. I went to the balcony. I now said, discussing with God, but God, I'm right. God, I'm right. I don't want her to feel like she's right in this matter. I said, God, I am right. God said, husbands, deal with your wives with what? On, he didn't say you're right or wrong. He said, deal with them with what? Understanding. So my wife was in the room. I now went there. I said, Angela. She said, yes. Ha. Ah. Hey, 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 hey. I said, no problem, no problem. 
but you know, and I said, I'm sorry. She said, it's okay. Ah! Mm. In my heart, I was saying, God is because of you. God is because of you. But guess what? By the time we sat down and had that, when we sat down to have that conversation, everything dissolved. Praise the Lord. When I first married my wife, my wife had the tendency of keeping uh, godly malice. Anytime my wife starts greeting me, good afternoon, good morning, with all those formalities, we are fighting. But she realized by my example that we should not keep malice. And even when I'm angry, I would say I'm sorry. Even when she's the one that causes, I would say I'm sorry. Today, we, all, we both have that culture. Just because we have chosen to keep to the word of God. This is just one example amongst many others. This is my charge to you. If you follow the word of God, it can be painful, but in the long run, it will benefit you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 